Greetings. In this tutorial, we'll cover time stretching audio clips. Let's start with a four bar loop playing against the metronome. Heart is singing, the bells are ringing, my heart is going in and out. My heart is singing, the bells are ringing. It's immediately obvious the audio clip is at a different BPM. Also, it doesn't align with the grid. So let's look at some ways we can beat match this loop to the project tempo. I'm going to start with a method you should probably avoid, but it illustrates a point when you have a loop of known length. When stretch mode is on, because when it's off dragging the ends of the clip simply move the start and end points, with stretch on, you can try to precisely resize the sample to fit a known number of bars. I'm holding the Alt key to disable snapping for more precision. Okay, it's now in time, but the pitch has changed. If I double click the audio clip to open its settings, I see that it's set to resample mode. I'll select one of the stretch modes, stretch, which is real time stretch, but heavier on the CPU, or one of the pre-computed stretch modes like Elastic 3 Generic. We'll choose that because it's lower in CPU and better suited for this type of work for that reason. Success! Our clip is in time. However, let's reset the clip since manually resizing a loop is fiddly and possibly hit and miss. There are more precise ways of syncing this loop. If you know the length of your sample, and it's 4 bars or less, you can right click the time knob and choose the length. As I know it's 4 bars, I can choose that, and again, set the stretching mode to Elastic 3 Generic. The third way is similar, but you can access it directly from the audio clip menu. Choose Fit to Tempo, then we can auto detect the tempo. Let's say we don't know it's 120 BPM and we're not really sure about what range it's in. In this case, right click the tempo selector and open the tap tempo. Make sure both the metronome and sync are off, as these will mess with your ability to tap in time with the beat. So that changed the project tempo to match the sample and let us know that it is or is around 120 BPM. Knowing the tempo or something close, you can reset the project to the target tempo and then use the audio clip menu option fit to tempo. Choose the range that matches the known tempo. And now it's synced and pitched correctly. Heart is singing. Notice the selector has flipped to auto. This means that it has selected one of the pre-computed elastic methods, most likely E3 generic. This is confirmed as the waveform doesn't change when I manually select it. Since this loop is now locked to the project tempo, changing the tempo will automatically stretch the clip and maintain the correct pitch. Heart is singing. Now we're at the original tempo, what about the case when you're in sync and you want to change it to something else, like 130 BPM? Again, use the Fit to Tempo option. This is always the second last item in the list and shows Project in brackets. Selecting that locks the clip to the current tempo and sets Stretch to Generic. Now I can change to a new BPM and it sounds great. Excellent. So far we've been using the pre-computed elastic stretch methods, but what happens when we vary project tempo? In this example, the project goes from 130 to 100 BPM, and the audio clip starts locked to 130 BPM with E3 generic stretch mode. Heart is singing, the bells are ringing, my heart is going in and out. My heart is singing. Cool and a useful technique in some circumstances, but it's not what we want here. Fortunately, the fix here is very easy. Just select Stretch from the real time section of the menu. If 
you want to apply real-time stretching to all audio clips in the project, there's a useful macro under Tools, Macros, Switch Real-Time Stretching for all audio clips. Now there's another way of handling tempo changes, and that is to make sure your audio clip's time is set to None and Mode Resample. Then the clip will play unmolested by tempo changes, although it will resize. It's just a visual thing. If you're watching this after the release of FL Studio 20, yes, that's the next major release after 12, then Tempo Maps will keep the sample locked to the grid. So there's some changes to look forward to there. Next, let's dive a little deeper into the pre-computed elastic modes. We've been working with complex full track audio that works best with E3 generic. We'll consider where mono and special modes are useful. The legacy modes on the right, by the way, are provided for backward compatibility with older projects. If you're starting a new project, use the left side of the menu. When stretching vocals, formant preservation is important. Formants are resonances of vocal cavities, and these normally stay fixed. Let's test. First original. Take myself out of the equation. E3 generic. Take myself out of the equation. And mono. Take myself out of the equation. Notice mono transforms the pitch and sounds more natural. This is because it also preserves the location of the formants. Take myself out of the equation. So use mono for solo vocals and instruments. Generic for complex music. Notice how mono mangles our original polyphonic loop. So stretch mode can be very important. Finally, percussion. Let's hear what each mode does to this drum loop. Here we've taken a 140 BPM loop down to 80 BPM, much slower. Starting with the original. Resample pitches down as it's played slower. Generic almost works, but listen to the transients of the last two beats. Slice Map and Slice Stretch modes are designed to avoid these issues. First, Slice Map. Slice Stretch. Both these modes slice the sample and avoid pitching the drum transients, so they sound normal. Generally, Map is good for speeding up drums and Stretch for slowing them down. In summary then, use Generic for complex polyphonic material, Mono for vocals and monophonic instruments, Slice Stretch and Map for percussion. Note real-time stretch is most similar to E3 Generic in the way it processes audio. That is, it will tend to smear transients and change formants, something to watch out for when using it. Okay, to wrap this up, let's consider some of the problems you may encounter when working with stretching and samples. These are associated with the options, General Settings, Advanced tab, Read Sample Tempo Information. So what does this option do, and how can it go wrong? I'll preview these two loops. First, with the project stopped, both play the same. If I start playback, notice the second plays faster. It's being tempo synced with the project. That's because the sample has embedded tempo information and a tempo sync flag set. You can check this in Edison. Right click the sample, edit in audio editor, and right click format edit properties, or use the F2 function key. 
here's the embedded 120 BPM tempo and the tempo sync flag. When these are set and the general settings advanced tab read sample tempo information is on, samples will be automatically stretched during preview at playback or when dropped onto the playlist. The loop without the tempo information is unstretched. But the one with tempo info is automatically stretched to match. However, if the embedded tempo is wrong, and this is quite common with randomly acquired samples off the internet, stretching will fail. For example, I'll edit the audio editor, F2, and set an incorrect 150 BPM tempo. Loading that, and it's incorrectly stretched. So if you're previewing samples and they're sounding way off or stretching oddly when put into the playlist, get stuck into the tempo and tempo sync metadata. By the way, the root note can cause issues for sampler channels too, if that's not set correctly or at all. And with that, I will leave you to enjoy the time stretching functions in FL Studio. Artists singing.